Talk, talk to me. WSRadio.com The San Diego Council on Literacy brings you Literacy for All with your host, Jose Cruz. Welcome to the show. I'm Jose Cruz from the San Diego Council on Literacy. You're listening to the Literacy for All radio show on WS Radio. Our guests today, we have three of them from the Escondido Public Library, are, let's see, Cynthia Chisholm. She is the uh, uh, president of the Friends Group. Hi, Cynthia. Yes, hi. Welcome. And then we have uh, Sheila Rodriguez. She is the Assistant Literacy Coordinator for Literacy. Hi. Is that, is that re- repetitive? Yes, okay. it is. Okay, good, good. I like it. Welcome to the show, <laughs> Sheila. Thank you. And then we have uh, Yvonne Brett, and she's the treasurer of the uh, Friends uh, Group. What is it called? The Friends of the Escondido Public Library? Escondido Public Library, Friends okay. of Literacy Services. Okay, okay. <laughs> I won't try to remember that, but we have it recorded. It's on tape. So, so glad to, to have you here. And uh, your work is so important. I know that we, um, in the course of trying to get uh, get <laughs> people to pay attention to the work we're doing, that you have to liven things up a little bit. And then you have um, a, uh, a quite an, maybe we, Sheila, you could talk about that, quite an interesting population uh, of uh, residents in the Escondido community. I don't. I mean, that's my my perception. Oh, and you're right on. Okay. I mean, we have such a diverse population that lives in Escondido, and that population is really um, whether it's seniors or young adults and young families, um, and then culturally diverse. Mm-hmm. It makes the population one that um, is interesting to service. Yeah, because you, know, you have, uh, as I understand it, somebody explained this to me, first were the natives. Correct. And then came, uh, I think, the Spaniards, and then the Mexicans, and then, and then the pioneers. And so that whole history is passing through Escondido. You have San Pasqual, and there's a whole story exactly. about that, right? Exactly. But it's very much farm country, too. Is that a good way to describe that? That is a good way, but, I mean, Yvonne, I mean, no, Yvonne, Cynthia could tell us even more because she's lived there for a while, right? Yes, I've been in Escondido for 45 years. Mm. Okay, so but, um, how much has it changed? Oh, a lot. Well, it's funny because it stayed the same in many ways in that it is still has the small town feel, mm-hmm. but our population just has grown tremendously. Okay, okay. so it's quite a mix. So you yes. do have families that have been there a long time. Correct. And then you have agriculture, and then you have just you know what's taking place in terms of progress and such. So that being uh, the case, and and I have to ask this question because it's in my head, I can't get beyond this. Do you have just the one library branch? Yes, at this point in time, we have the one library branch. We used to have two, but um, years past, they um, closed uh, the East East Valley branch. branch. Mm -hmm. And so uh, currently we just have the one on Calamia. And, And you've gone through some changes because it was uh, the Escondido Public Library, part of the city of Escondido. Is that the case, or do I understand it, that the library is not... Pri- I haven't noticed any changes. There hasn't been, and so the library... So it's privately run, though, right? It's privately run, but it is still under the umbrella of the city of um, Escondido. Okay, very good. And so uh, on the average day, the Escondido Public Library opens up. What have you all done in order to get people to show up? What's going on? Oh, well, the Escondido... I mean, we have so many programs at the Escondido Library, which has been a uh, a complete, what do you want to say, like... uh, Adventure? Adventure (laughs) is a good word. Adventure is a good word. Um, The types of programs that they've been able to do and really listening to what the community is asking Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. and really trying to meet the needs of the community. Some of the popular things that has transpired... Um, besides our movie matinees that come out um, Mm -hmm. once a month. And that seems to have a really good flow of people because it's family-oriented, along with our concerts that come. We also have 3D printing, which seems to be a big rage. Mm -hmm. Um, And what the 3D printing is, um, our printer's called TAZ, T-A-Z, and you're able to actually print something that 
turns into a little figure that you can take home as a prize, I guess, if you would call it that. But um, there's classes um, at the last Friday of the month. And um, those classes, um, you do need to register because there's a limit. And this is to use TAS? This is to use TAS, oh. and you can actually learn how to print something, uh, a 3D figure. Mm -hmm. So it used to be we went to the library just to copy, like, you know, our homework or, or <laughs> right, exactly. our term paper. So now we're copying things. And that's that's great. I mean, just another exactly. way to, to attract folks to, to the library. Right. And remember, it's not just for books. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of libraries have come into a big community center um, type setting because it's centrally located. Mm -hmm. Very good. So um, let's see, uh, Cynthia and Yvonne, what do you see I mean, as, as board members going into the library? Is that an experience you have? Are you there often? Are you kind of on the side doing board work? Well, um, our group meets um, in order to support the literacy services, mm -hmm. which Sheila will tell us more about. Mm -hmm. But um, when we're Coming up on our big fundraiser, um, we actually sit in the lobby with a table and talk about literacy and give out uh, information about nice. literacy mm -hmm. and about our Scrabble-a-thon event. Mm -hmm. So we see lots of the patrons. We talk to um, a lot of the seniors come by, mm -hmm. and uh, we encourage them to play Scrabble with us. So it's kind of fun. That sounds and, like um, fun. We have a lot of families that come in mm -hmm. every day with little children, mm -hmm. and it's a wide range of the population of Escondido, and it's really fun for me, anyway, to see all that. Very good. And Yvonne, are you having fun being a board member? Yes, it's been great. I've been on the board for, I think, around 13 years or so, mm -hmm. and um, my role is basically fundraising. Um, I'm in the background because I'm still working full-time as a librarian at a high school. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> and so, um, so I don't get to get over there as much, but my um, grandchildren live in Escondido. Mm -hmm. They take um, good advantage of the children's programming there, which is really awesome. Very good. And you have a great library. I mean, I've mm -hmm. been going there. It's, oh, my goodness. I don't know. It's just you keep it up. You have your children's section. You have your meeting rooms. Uh, yes. You have a great collection yes. of, of materials and such. Can you say something about the circulation? Just Is it growing, staying the same? You know, our circulation is actually growing, and we have really expanded with shifting um, a lot of our books so that it has um, more of an eye for people coming in. Mm -hmm. I can't really give you numbers off the top of my head, but mm -hmm. um, I know our circulation has increased Very tremendously. Good. And so uh, you have a literacy program for adults, children, family. That's one question. And two, why, why is the library involved in literacy? Okay. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> That's my favorite part. Okay, so um, so Escondido Public Library has an adult literacy program that's been around since 1989, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, the program is really to support individuals coming in that want to improve on their knowledge, uh, skills, and um give them a, a leg up to be able to move forward in their lives. And so, um, let's see. So you have, you have individuals who are coming in, they don't read well, or, or maybe they don't know English, and they can come into the library and ask for help, and somebody will give them a tutor? Yes, so our program offers small classes, and our classes um, range from four to uh, around 10 students. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also offer one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Very good. Mm -hmm. And I've been to, to I'm going to call them recognition dinners, but uh, and seeing the testimonials and such. And um, just like a lot of organizations that are doing this work, you're, uh, you're making dreams come true. Um, do you have a favorite student story? Oh. I have several favorite student stories. <laughs> One that um, might take about a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we did have an individual that came into our program, and originally when the individual came in, um, they would say, um, I, I want to read, but I only want to read really skinny books, like nothing fat. <laughs> and I'd you know, show them a book. It had like maybe 160 pages, and they'd go, that book's too fat. That's just way too fat. So I kept 
showing smaller and smaller books and then eventually got to a book that had about 32 pages. And they were like, oh, I was ready to read that. So moving forward, um, the individual's been in the program a little over two years, and now they read a book that um, contains over 160-something pages, and they have a real joy for reading now. Okay, so it's not that big, scary book anymore. <laughs> exactly. Right, right. And that is, you know, that's, you know, just initially you see a book and it's like this is mm-hmm. the scene of the crime, I guess, for some people. So yeah. you make them feel good about getting help and you give them that help and then they progress and you give them the time that they need uh, to, to move forward. So uh, it's, a, it's a great thing that you're doing. We, we say, this is a quote I stole from a long time ago, that, the, the library is the people's university, mm-hmm. and so anyone can go. But if you if you don't know how to read and write or you don't read and write well, then you're kind of blocked out a little bit. So exactly. that's where it really makes sense that the library continues to be uh, the point of access for everyone. So mm-hmm. you can come there, and if you can't read the books, then you're going to show them how to read them, right? And yes. so it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, so we really are, are glad to have you on the show to talk about that part of things. We're going to come back in the next segment. We're going to talk just a, a little bit more about literacy and then get into something big that's coming up. It's the 15th year of the 16th Scrabble. 16th year. Is it the 16th year? Is and it it'll be 16th? my 16th year being an MC. This is a Scrabblethon. So um, we'll, we'll get back to, to you on those. Um, we have the Ask you Public Library here on the Literacy for All radio show, and all of us are listening to WS Radio, the worldwide leader in Internet talk. Can you help a newborn baby in need? Sometimes the blessing of birth becomes complicated and perilous. Miracle Babies is there to help. Miracle Babies helps moms and dads give their all to their struggling little baby, but still need more. When you give to Miracle Babies, you help them give more. More skin-to-skin care, breast milk, and love. Go to MiracleBabies.org and give right now. Be their miracle. Looking to be a successful entrepreneur? The virtual assistant industry continues to be a top choice for those looking to start their own business. The problem can be how to become a virtual assistant. Many turn to the Bible of the VA industry, the book, Virtual Assistant, the series. And it's the perfect guide for office managers, executive assistants, and other administrative professionals looking to make the transition from employee to successful business owner. Go to vatheseries.com to get your copy today. Small businesses are the lifeblood of America's economy. Every Thursday, SBA Radio interviews industry professionals and is dedicated to provide small businesses with timely insights and innovations. Visit www.sbaradio.us for details. Homeless veterans and their families are suffering and need our support, but many won't ask or don't know that help is within reach. Veterans Community Services is here to help. Amazingly, about 35% of the homeless in our neighborhoods are veterans with families. Low-income veterans or their friends are encouraged to contact Veterans Community Services and reach out for help with housing and other services. Call now, 800-974-9909. I raised $8,000 to build schools for South African children. After realizing how many people go hungry in San Diego, I now volunteer at a food pantry. I'm spending the next year doing volunteer projects across three countries and helping in ways they designate to be the most helpful. The World Link program at the Joan B. Kroc Institute for Peace and Justice recognizes the potential of youth as agents of social change. Learn how you can help youth become a generation of leaders in action at peace.sandiego.edu. Can you imagine a world without children? A world where children don't play, or dream, or imagine. At St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, we're working every day to find cures for diseases that strike down children. Because we can't imagine a world without children. Can you? Finding cures, saving children. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. To learn how you can help, log on to our website, stjude.org. 
Donate cash, furniture, clothes, and other gently used household items to Father Joe's Villages and get a nice tax break in April. Every donation is tax deductible. Believe you can make a difference. Be Father Joe. Go to neighborhood.org or call 1-800-HOMELESS to donate today. Talk, talk to me. WSRadio.com The San Diego Council on Literacy brings you Literacy for All with your host, Jose Cruz. Welcome back to the show. I'm Jose Cruz from the San Diego Council on Literacy. You're listening to the Literacy for All radio show, and we have with us um, leadership from the Escondido Public Library, the uh, Literacy Services folks, and the Friends of Literacy Services. Uh, Cynthia Chisholm is here. She's the uh, board president for the Friends Group. And then Yvonne is the treasurer for the Friends Group. And then Sheila Rodriguez is, she's the assistant literacy coordinator. Um, and you wanted to say a bit more about a couple of other activities, and then we're going to talk about Scrabblethon. Yes, we are. Yeah. Scrabblethon is very important to our literacy program. So um, Escondido Public Library also will be having, coming up in March, is um, our guided career series, which will help um, individuals to be able to strategize on how to write a resume or build a resume. And that'll be coming up um, Friday, March 13th, and then um, also Friday the 20th. But one of our big children's events that's coming up, which would be March 21st, is our Nature Backpacks. And we're going to have it at Dixon Lake. And it's from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And you can come out and have a wonderful time with a lot of our um, partners that will be out there, the Escondido Community uh, Services and the Recycling Division, as well as the San Diego Children's Discovery Museum and uh, quite a few more partners that will be there. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, We do have our summer for our literacy department. We will be having our summer kickoff on June 16th. And that will include our adult literacy as well as our Families for Literacy program. Very good. Very good. Well, the campy thing sounds like something I should be doing. Yes. Sounds like fun. Very healthy. Uh, so, Cynthia, um, we want to talk about Scrabblethon. Um, and you tell me, because I've always wondered, um, this is a Scrabble tournament. Is anybody else doing this? Uh, not not that we're aware of. There have been some um, various Scrabble tournaments around the country, but ours is pretty unique. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm going to let Yvonne tell you about who can play and how you can sign up. Yes, this is our 16th year of having the Scrabble tournament. Um, it's going to be um, next Saturday, Saturday, March 7th, um, beginning at 8 in the morning, and it runs till about 1.30. It's at the Park Avenue Community Center in Escondido. And um, you can register for it online at escondidolibrary.org forward slash Scrabblethon. And we'd like you to pre-register. And you can uh, register to play in uh, several different divisions depending on your skill level. So we have an advanced division for people who are really, really great at Scrabble. Mm -hmm. Um, We have an intermediate division for people who play regularly, but they're not at that super advanced level. And then we also have a novice category where if you just want to come and play for fun, you can be in that novice category and there's no pressure on you to, um, to be there. Very good, very good. So so you do have rooms for teams still? Yes, we do. Um, we don't call them teams this year. We've changed a little bit, and we're calling it affiliations. So um, you can come with a group as small as two or up to ten. Mm-hmm. And if you're all from the same family, the same school, the same business, or just a group of friends, you can call yourself an affiliated group. Very good. Now, I've, I've been a part of this event since the first year. Uh, it's friendly, and it's a fundraiser and fun, but it's also um, it's pretty serious. <laughs> <laughs> you have judges and stuff. And, uh, yes, we do. Um, we have judges just to wander around and answer questions. But, um, so it's very well organized, and you pay, play five games of 30 minutes each. Mm-hmm. And... Um, 
Yvonne has actually played in it a number of times, right, Yvonne? Yes, I've played in the advanced level um, against some of these people who are really amazing. They know words that you have never heard of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um, so that's why we have the judges, because, um, you know, you can play a phony word right. and try to get away with it. Um, but then you can call over a judge and, and uh, see if that's really a word or not. It's a nicely run operation because the judges are right there. You have a good mm -hmm. number of them. They're experienced. They know the game. And they, they know the things that come up, right? My favorite part of this whole activity has been teaching our adult learners how to play Scrabble. Yes. And I've sort of taken that on for the last four or five years. And we actually have a couple of them that are going to play in the beginner category this year. But we also set up a casual play table where um, people can play along, but they're not actually part of the tournament. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a number of our learners that come and play at that table. And it's very rewarding to see them learning how to spell and how to use new words yes. and increasing their vocabulary. I just love that part. So yeah. do you help to get people into the learners into the tournament? Or is well, the whole premise is behind what Cynthia is doing is encouraging our learners to come in and not be afraid mm -hmm. to go outside of their normal scope. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of them look forward to... Um, a workshop that Cynthia put together for where they come into our classroom and then they work with the learners and they do a workshop and then they feel a little braver to go yeah, on and yeah. go to the actual Scrabble-thon. I mean, look at the, the, the irony of it really is that, you know, here are folks who maybe have struggled with reading and the words have already been kind of, the letters are scrambled, the words are scrambled, yes. and they're putting words together just symbolically. I like it. So now, you know, we're coming and we're not afraid of these jumbled up exactly. letters. Exactly. You know, so what are things people should, uh, well, let me ask this, because last year you guys had KUSI president. Wasn't that last year, Dave Scott? Yes, yes. And he spent like two hours there with you guys? Yes, he did. He did live weather reports from our tournament. Uh, <laughs> I remember seeing that, and I was just really impressed. But that tells me, you know, that, um, what, do, what do they say, this is the real deal. They, you know, add some, yeah, and so um, uh, the place to be, this is on Saturday, March 7th, right? Correct. And tell us again just the information about the event. Yeah, and also um, we serve breakfast to everybody. I was going to come to and that. Lunch. Yeah. And so lunch. So yeah. people can hang out the whole time. Mm -hmm. And um, and also this year we have a lot of high school kids coming to play. Mm -hmm. um, we've been um, doing some workshops at, at the local high schools trying to get them get their skill levels up. Well, in the early years, uh, the, the high school students were a big part of this event. We watched them kind of fall mm -hmm. off. Are they coming back? Yes, they are coming oh, back. Oh, man. We do have okay. some. Okay. And also, Cynthia, tell us. Tell us about the raffles and, and prizes. Yes, so we, um, at this event, you don't have to play Scrabble to come and bid on prizes or to buy opportunity drawing tickets. We have a lot of great things that have been donated this year, probably close to $3,000 worth of prizes. And we're being sponsored by the Pala Band of Mission Indians, which we're very grateful for, and also Mission Federal Credit Union. Um, some of the local businesses have sponsored the high school students, so they do not need to pay an entry fee. And uh, Carlson Family Dental and Citricado Dental are among those who have sponsored high school students. We're very excited about that. And uh, do you want to hear about more prizes? Uh, actually, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. We have uh, a, a signed Tony Hawk skateboard Whoa. deck that's going to be in the silent auction and an overnight stay at the Pala Casino Hotel is going to be in our silent auction. So those are a couple of highlights. Those are good ones. That'll bring out a few folks. Yeah. So uh, let's say I want to participate. I want to compete. What do I have to do? Yeah, okay, it'd yeah. be great if you signed up online at the library website. Um, we'd like to know how many people are coming, but you can also just come that morning. Um, come at, at 8 o'clock and say, I want to play. Okay. You can do that. Or if you just want to come and buy raffle tickets, you can do that too. Okay. And so the, uh, the website for the library again is? Is um, escondidolibrary.org forward slash Scrabblethon. Okay. And the actual tournament is taking place not at the library. It's going to be at the Park Avenue Community Center. And so that address will be online, but it's at 210 East, East Park, Park Avenue, Avenue 
in yeah. Escondido. And it's a perfect location for this event. It's a perfect size and such, yes. and mm -hmm. no problem with parking. And if you want to go shop at Food for Less, it's right across the street. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, you know, I think I might have done that. Uh, but there's there's so much for everyone there. Uh, good food and prize opportunities and the competition, and just, you're com contributing to a really really good cause. Um, let's see. We have about a minute and a half left. I want to give you each about 20 seconds. Famous last words. Let's start with Yvonne. <laughs> well, we sure would like to um, have a lot of people come out to um, our fundraiser. It's the only one that we do for the whole year, and um, we just want to make it successful. Very good. Sheila. <laughs> okay. If you do not want to come to the fundraiser, which would make me very sad, I would love for you to be there because it's very important to our program. You're welcome to come and volunteer. Or if you're interesting, interested in services, you're welcome to give us a call. Or you can look on the website, Escondido Public Library slash yeah. Literacy. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Thanks, Sheila. And Cynthia. And um, I just want to encourage everybody to um, come on March 7th at 8 o'clock in the morning, have some coffee, have some breakfast, and hang out with us. We'll have a lot of fun. It's going to be great. Come in and, and check it out if, uh, if you're listening, and you are listening because you wouldn't be hearing me say this right now. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and you can come meet Jose you can in come person. Meet me. I'll be there <laughs> right. in, my, in my bow tie and looking forward to it and looking forward to seeing some of our listeners there. So I want to thank everyone from the Escondido Public Library for, for being on the Literacy for All radio show. Um, we're trying to, to get a, a good representation of the programs here, and your presence has made a difference. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So you have been listening to the Literacy for All radio show on WS Radio, the worldwide leader in Internet talk. Nowadays, internet devices are an integral part of your home. Everyone in your family has a smartphone, tablet, or a computer. Life is easier knowing that all your devices are secured and your family can surf the internet carefree. ESED Multi-Device Security Pack does just that. One license for all your devices. With ESET, it's simple to stay protected and save money. Enjoy safer technology with ESET Multi-Device Security Pack at ESET.com. That's E-S-E-T dot com. On the internet, your business's reputation can be unjustly destroyed in an instant. Don't wait for that to happen. Building and marketing your five-star reputation can increase your business by as much as 19%. Take control of your reputation and have the five-star reputation you deserve with Reputation Marketing Solutions by DSI Development. Become the go-to company by visiting 5starrepmarketing.com. The number 5starrepmarketing.com. Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you've found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit moesguitars.com or their Facebook page, mozeguitars.com, 619-698-1185. Tired of presentations with no impact, no inspiration, and no traction? Do dull speakers have you and your team disengaged and distracted by smartphones? Christopher McAuliffe brings energy, insights, and two decades of experience delivered with punch, humor, and heart. Your team will leave energized, uplifted, and with a sense of purpose. Visit ChristopherMcAuliffe.com to bring some heat to your next speaking engagement. M-C-A-U-L-I-F-F-E. ChristopherMcAuliffe.com. Nowadays, internet devices are an integral part of your home. Everyone in your family has a smartphone, tablet, or a computer. Life is easier knowing that all your devices are secured and your family can surf the internet carefree. ESET Multi-Device Security Pack does just that. One license for all your devices. With ESET, it's simple to stay protected and save money. Enjoy safer technology with ESET Multi-Device Security Pack at ESET.com. That's E-S-E-T dot com.
Tired of presentations with no impact, no inspiration, and no traction? Do dull speakers have you and your team disengaged and distracted by smartphones? Christopher McAuliffe brings energy, insights, and two decades of experience delivered with punch, humor, and heart. Your team will leave energized, uplifted, and with a sense of purpose. Visit ChristopherMcAuliffe.com to bring some heat to your next speaking engagement. M-C-A-U-L-I-F-F-E. ChristopherMcAuliffe.com.